Welcome back to Sikistan and welcome back to a video which we don't do very often and that is talking about other coaches. We always say we don't want to talk about other coaches, we don't want to talk smack about other coaches, but in scenarios where it is something valuable and we kind of like what we see, we'll either try to get them on the podcast or discuss them in other areas. And so you can guess from this case, from the thumbnail, that we're talking positively today about Ben Patrick and knees over toes guys. This is someone that you guys asked for a lot last year when Ben was on his riding his wave to stardom, social media stardom and success. And we refrained from camping on it. It wasn't something we didn't any experience with. But he's recently on Joe Rogan and I feel like now is probably a good time to take advantage of the algorithm. And oftentimes when people are guests on podcasts, a lot of you guys like to hear what, and myself included, if someone is on a podcast, I like to hear what the people I enjoy think about them, especially if it's in a subject where they might be promoting things that are a little bit different. So I like to hear people who might be knowledgeable in that area that I trust to talk about them so I can help evaluate my own opinions on what they're doing. So first things first, in relation to Ben on the podcast, the impression I got from Ben on that podcast, that's probably the longest I've listened to him talk. I've listened to him on Mark Bell before, I think sometime last year. So there's a couple of hours of listening to him. He seems genuine. He seems to come across genuine. He makes his mission, or, or so he states, that he is helping a lot of people. His mission is to help as many people figure out this stuff as much as possible so they can enjoy the sports they're doing. And through his actions, it genuinely seems like he is kind of putting, you know, He's walking the walk, essentially. The amount of free content he puts out across his platforms are, you know, it seems to be most of the stuff he knows and seems to be most of the stuff in his training group or training program, which is very, very commendable that he's putting out as much of his knowledge as he possibly can. And essentially, if you pay attention to enough of that, you could then put these in action yourself without ever actually buying anything off him and recover and rehab or increase your range of motion and whatever it is you need to do and rehab your knees or potentially back I think he's straying into now but I'd ever buying anything from him so it's just quite commendable and so he's kind of walking the walk in relation to the things he's saying so that's kind of the first impression I got he just seems like a nice guy he seems like someone who is quite genuine in what he's trying to do to help people next I kind of want to touch on something I've mentioned before a couple of months ago in one of our live streams on do I think Ben Patrick stuff works do I think it is makes sense I think, first of all, there's too much anecdotal evidence on, you know, YouTube, Instagram, Reddit of people trying these exercises. I think there's just too much anecdotal evidence for us to really ignore that, especially when it comes to things like injury rehab. The injury rehab area is quite conflated and there's a lot of misinformation or there's a lot of unknowns due to a variety of different causes to sim things that might appear similar. So someone might have pain in the same place, but there might be a variety of different causes causing this pain. So there's quite murky waters and require a lot of expertise and skill from someone diagnosing exercises and re, you know, recommending or prescribing rehab exercises can be quite difficult. What I think is kind of happening with knees over toes, this guy's movement is basically a lot of people just don't have full range of motion and they don't have stability in that full range of motion if they have that. So what I think he's doing in his whole principle is about, and it seems to me this is the kind of the take I'm getting from it is you're trying to have increase your full range of motion to what your body allows and what your kind of natural anatomic limits are and then strengthen that as much as possible through a variety of different isolation exercises that move through this full range of motion as much as possible. Now for a lot of you guys listening to this it's possible that these may not work for your particular style of pain. For example if you've tendonitis through excessive loading you moving through a full range of motion and trying to strengthen it with a high volume of assistance exercises is only likely going to make your tendonitis worse. However, the people we see helping or his exercise we see helping are people who are not necessarily well endowed in the strength and conditioning area or a heavily involved in the strength training area. So, for example, one part of the podcast, Ben and Joe mentioned that they were doing split squats and they were like, I've never seen anyone do split squats. Now, for most of you guys listening, will know that Bulgarian split squats or goblet squat, split squats, something like that, are completely commonplace. They are, you know, completely synonymous with most strength and conditioning programs. They're something they're very, very common. They're nothing revolutionary. But for a lot of people, average Joes who are former people who might have done sports during uh, school or a little bit in college and then proceeded to stop all sports and have lingering knee pain, which is what we see a lot of time. So what we'll see sometimes is people will do sports in college. They'll stop doing them or just finish by college. They'll have a knee injury that started in college. It will maintain because they didn't address it. They'll return to sports um, as the resurgence of kind of strength training and fitness and, you know, that kind of lifestyle grows larger every year. 
they'll still have the same knee injury or same issue, whatever it is, but they'll also lack any range of motion or any strength through this range of motion. And what happens then, they'll condition these smaller apparatus like their tibialis anterior, they'll train their quads through a full range of motion, they'll increase their ankle mobility and use this through some of the exercises Benz prescribes. And they will increase this kind of stability and strength through this extended range of motion. And lo and behold, their knee problems go away. And so for the vast majority of people, this is exactly what they need and this is why it works. Now, I think for a lot of you guys watching this, it's very, very possible that this isn't the cause of your problems. Your guys' things might be acute events from a particular injury. It might be uh, tendonitis from overloading. So doing this kind of stuff isn't necessarily the right move at the start. It could be other hip mobility problems or ankle mobility problems, which the exercise he seems to prescribe. So just from what I'm seeing from his social media, they may not necessarily help you. However, his target audience might not be you guys. What it seems to be is people who want to play basketball, athletes who are blissfully unaware that full range of motion is a good thing, who are unaware that knees over toes is something that is applicable. Now, this isn't something that I'm saying in a derogatory way. I think this is a this makes perfect sense. There's nothing revolutionary about what Ben is doing, and that's totally okay. It's like we always talk about with S and C work. It's not supposed to be revolutionary. You're supposed to do what works. And that makes perfect sense from our point of view. You increase your range of motion if it appears to be lacking to what you should be able to do. And then you strengthen this as much as possible through progressively harder exercises. That makes perfect sense. And I think it's phenomenal. There is, you know, I, I don't see a problem with a lot of it does. Some of it might be a little bit of a sledgehammer effect for some people. You don't see some of it. The diagnosis is you not being able to do an exercise or doing an exercise. And I think there could be a little bit more nuance in that. But I have joined his, his training group and I don't intend to. So maybe he does a little bit differently. So I can't comment particularly on that. But his basic idea, I think, stands up to scrutiny. One thing from the podcast that I didn't particularly enjoy or that was kind of um, not it's not synonymous with Ben himself a lot of people say this when they're kind of doing things a little bit differently is they kind of come at this angle from the science they'll quote in the science or the research they'll quote numbers or they'll quote how much money is spent on a particular kind of research for example he mentions in the podcast talking about uh, there's more research done on acceleration than deceleration uh, I, I don't not even sure how people would be quantifying that but it's kind of a they don't even research this. They're not even going to research this, you know. And I, I, I'm always here to defend sports scientists. Now, I know we do pay-per-views and sometimes we'll rag on the paper and point out flaws in it. But ultimately, we're always in favor of research being done. So any research being done is, is rarely a bad thing if it's done correctly. So I just kind of, I don't like this kind of idea of saying they don't even research this. This is not even in the textbooks. Uh, I, I don't particularly enjoy that angle because it's somewhat derogatory for no particularly good reason uh, for example a lot of times in injury rehab the ethics approval is more difficult every couple of years uh, for example if you know for a fact or you know with good faith that a certain treatment protocol um, can help someone injury with injury rehab a practitioner or medical practitioner has a duty of care to give this person uh, this particular protocol or whatever it may be to rehab so for example if you're trying to get ethical approval for a rehab uh, study you're not going to get ethical approval if you know something works for a particular injury and you want to try something else that may not work or may potentially make it worse you won't get ethics approval anymore like you would have done maybe in the 60s and 70s and 80s um it's just not something that happens so i uh, I don't really enjoy that tone. It's just something I wanted to comment on um, where you see like the kind of the science as if there's some kind of global body of people doing research. These are independent individuals trying to do the best research they possibly could, picking areas of expertise that they are feel like they are capable in and producing meaningful studies. And if they think it's meaningful, I'd like to give them a little bit more slack than the kind of it, it wasn't malicious, but I don't like that some kind of a derogatory kind of uh, you know, that kind of, as if there's some kind of conglomerate of science, everyone's getting together, deciding to do bad research. That's not how it goes. That's not really what happens. So I would just wanted to point that out and just make that known. You know, I just uh, give them some slack. It's tough coming up with studies, finding participants, you know, especially an injury rehab, let alone S&C studies. Injury rehab or prehab stuff is super difficult. So just give them a bit of slack, I would say. So overall, Ben seems like a cool guy. He seems like he's doing good stuff. I see too much, way too much anecdotal evidence to say that it's helping people and that's phenomenal and that's all 
I think that matters. I don't really think it's hurting people. I've never seen anyone say that they did his stuff and it made it worse. It was either some people said it made no difference or lots of people, it seems, said they did his stuff and made a big difference. And that's great to see. That's all we're here for is just help people get better. So uh, I'd say kudos to Ben. And, you know, pretty cool that Joe Rogan had him on, someone like that. It's pretty cool to see people like that on. So hopefully we'll see more people from this kind of side of things on Joe Rogan if he can get interested in it. Thanks for watching, guys. Let me know your thoughts if you listen to it. Uh, it's quite it's it's short enough like a two hour podcast so it's it's worth a listen just to hear him talking about interesting he talks about doing a animal based diet which is i think is something i favor myself so it's interesting he uses that as well and the uh, no tv thing for a year no entertainment is pretty intense so let me know if you listen to it let me know your thoughts in the comments below thanks guys